Welcome back, everybody. My next guest tonight is running for president of these United States. Please welcome Senator Rand Paul. Thanks for being here. It's nice to have you. I've, I've wanted to talk to you for a long time. I thought I was going to get a monologue. When's my monologue? Anytime you want. You know what? Jerry Seinfeld uh, made fun of your hair. And so, <laughs> by debate rules, you have a 30 second rebuttal if there's anything you would like to say about Jerry right. Seinfeld's the, the hair. The next time we come out together and we have him look in the mirror and say, Who's got the better hair, Jerry? <laughs> That's true. That's true. Now, uh, I understand you cut your own hair. Is that true? I'm conservative, man. I got to save money. I got three That's kids in college. That's fiscally conservative. I got three what kids in college. What do you use? Nail clippers? What do you uh, use to cut your hair? It's a bit random, and sometimes it involves drinking beforehand. All right. That, that... Is, that, is that what rand is short for? <laughs> random, Paul? Uh, could be. How's your dad, by the way? I'm a fan of your dad. You know, he's doing great. <laughs> yeah. My dad is indomitable. He is, yeah. I mean, we go home and he outwalks us. He outrides us on the bike. He's in great shape. Does he out talk you? Because uh, there's a close competition in our household for talking. Really? Yes. Yeah, a lot of a lot of talkers in the Paul household. Well, he is, um, you know, a congressman in his own right and a doctor as you are. And the thing that I really like about your dad is that he's intellectually consistent. You know where he stands. Absolutely. Are you as transparent in your beliefs, do you believe, as your dad is? I try to be only almost as good, because if I were better, then that would be embarrassing at home, you know, if you're better than your dad. Said. So I try to be almost as good. Um, if, you've, <laughs> if you've had to curtail any of your beliefs in order to run for president, uh, sit there and blink. I called all night. <laughs> um, and you got uh, a new book right now. It's called uh, Taking a Stand. There's the book right there. Now, um, I got the latest polls here, sir. And I'm not going to go into the numbers too much. It's the CNN nationwide poll. And you're, you're on the list here. You know, you're, you're always in the, the top card debate at this point. You're a little bit down the list. You know, uh, you're behind Rubio and Carson and Christie. You're above Bush. Kasich and Huckabee, the numbers in some way don't really matter. What matters on this list is you're all over 25 points behind a guy who builds golf courses for a living. <laughs> Did you think that actual government experience would be a liability the way it is right now? There's another list on the other side of your card, and it says uh, I was at the very top of this one. Wh which one? Uh, the worst dressed. <laughs> Or really? Can you believe, there, you can you believe they would put me at the top of the worst dress list? You look fine. That's because my wife made me wear this. I was going to wear a mock turtleneck. I had cut Did you wear a mock turtleneck? Really? Absolutely. You look like Tom Brokaw. Seven. <laughs> He's the last man who can look good in a turtleneck. You can get them for $7.99 at Target. Again. <laughs> I hope your haircuts cost more than that. <laughs> Debatable. But you were one of the first guys who ever to go after Donald Trump. And called him like a blowhard or something like that. You know, um, I think there's all kidding aside. I think there's a certain seriousness to leading a nation of 300 million. You know? God, I hope so. <laughs> and I guess what concerns me is in the last debate there was a discussion of the nuclear triad. That means that we have missiles by air, by land, and by sea. As as Paul Revere told us. Exactly. <laughs> but the thing is, he he seemed to be. Unaware that we even had that, but then a week later, it's even scarier. Mr. Trump says, "Of course, we've got a nuclear triad, and our biggest problem is we've been unwilling to use it enough." Really? And I mean, I, we're we're kind of making light, but that shouldn't be made light of. The nuclear arsenal that he w is more eager to use it. We've got him, and then there's the big guy from New Jersey. He says he wants to shoot down. Chris Russia. Christie yeah. he has a name, sir. He wants to. <laughs> He's not just, he's not the, just the lens meat. But anyway, he's eager to shoot down Russian planes. You said that if you wanted somebody to start World War III, you pointed at Christie and said, here's your man. Right, and I think that's the important part of these debates is you want someone with judgment, someone with wisdom, but someone with restraint. And I am worried, but interestingly, it's on both sides. Hillary Clinton wants a no-fly zone as well. Mm -hmm. She's ready to shoot down Russian planes as well. Hillary Clinton wanted to topple Gaddafi in Libya. She wants regime change. And that's why I think the last debate was the best debate we've had because we really got a discussion over 
is it really America's role in the world, or should it be America's role in the world, to choose who the leaders are of all the countries in the Middle East, and has it worked in the past? Well, one of the things that's interesting about you, and I like about you, and I liked about your dad, is that you are sometimes hard to pin down along a sort of uh, dogmatic ideological line. Um, some things you have in common with the left and some things you have in common with the right because you're libertarian-ish, libertarian-ish. Yeah, it's because I don't want to be quite as good as my dad, almost as good as my dad. Yeah. I'm a libertarian-ish. He's a libertarian, you're libertarian-ish. Well, he's almost libertarian. I'm libertarian-ish. Okay, so what is, explain to me what, and for the people out there, what, what is a libertarian? How are they different than a Republican or a Democrat? In sort of general terms, Republicans haven't been very good with your personal privacy or your personal liberty, but Democrats haven't been very good with your economic liberty. They want all kinds of rules on business that interfere with the marketplace. Government uh, on the Republican side has a government that wants to collect your phone records, be involved with what you do in your home. And libertarians say, you know what? They want to leave you the hell alone no matter what, whether it's your business or your private life. Well, is there anybody, do you have anything in common? Do you have anything in common with Bernie Sanders? Yes, we work in the same place. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, uh, sometimes we do. Mm -hmm. I think that people on the left, uh, Ron Wyden actually I work with a little more in the Senate, but he would call himself, I think, a progressive Democrat. He and I have worked together on NSA reform, trying to end the bulk collection of all our phone records, uh, trying to bring troops home from Afghanistan, and trying to have a less interventionist or more realistic foreign policy. What about on drug, drug policy reform? You're not going to talk about pot, are you? Are you a cop? Because if you're a cop, you have to tell me <laughs> that you're a cop, or this is entrapment. I, I thought we said before we would not talk about pot, Stephen. You tried to sell me pot backstage. <laughs> no. That was I'm sorry. You tried to sell me on the idea of changing sentencing guidelines for pot. I should have, right. I should have uh, said the entire sentence. I apologize. I apologize. Tell you what, pl please come again, and we won't talk about pot. Okay. Senator yeah. Paul. Thank you, It's Steve. a pleasure. Senator Rand Paul, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs>